The goal of this lecture is to help you understand some of the kinetic controls on microbial activity in geological environments. We're going to start out by talking about the Monod equation. We'll look at a couple of examples of the Monod equation applied to two of the groups of microbes we've been talking about. And then we'll show you um, how some of these terms in the Monod equation are related to thermodynamics. Okay, so this is the rate law for microbial metabolism that we've been organizing our discussion around. That term on the right there is the thermodynamic potential factor uh, that I described in detail in the previous lecture. I hope that that lecture helped illustrate for you one of the ways that environments can control or influence microbial activity, and that is by affecting the thermodynamics, by uh, the um, delta G of the metabolic reaction. Okay, But of course, thermodynamics is not the only uh, influence on microbial reaction rates, and this Monod equation helps us uh, take into account some of these other factors that are important. The Monod equation has been around for several decades. It was uh, defined by Jacques Monod, uh, a French scientist that lived from 1910 to 1976, uh, and someone that is regarded as one of the founders of molecular biology. So he was a very influential scientist. Here's an expanded version of the Monod equation. S refers to substrate concentration. Uh, in biochemistry, the substrate is the molecule upon which an enzyme acts. Okay, So if we think about an enzymatic reaction, we have some substrate coming in that uh, we can think of as binding to the enzyme, causing the enzyme to somehow change uh, and allowing it to catalyze the reaction. And the image that's shown here is the lock and key model for an enzyme, enzymatic reaction. The important point here is that because we're interested in microbes, what we're talking about uh, are enzymatically catalyzed reactions. Right? Microbes create enzymes that they use to catalyze their reactions. So it makes sense to see you know, enzyme kinetic term showing up in our reaction uh, our rate law. Okay, Vmax is the maximum rate that the reaction can achieve. It's the rate of the reaction under optimal conditions. And that relates to temperature, pH, but also the abundance of substrate. Uh, they're under optimal conditions, the enzyme has plenty of substrate that it can uh, uh, react with. All right, one other term here, Km is referred to as the half-saturation constant. Km is itself a substrate concentration. And it's the substrate concentration that exists when the rate of the reaction is one-half of its maximum rate. Okay, so let me try to illustrate this for you a little bit using a drawing pad. Okay. So imagine, uh, let's just uh, examine the relationships that, that typically exist uh, between the reaction rate and the amount of substrate for an enzymatic reaction. So we have, over here we have reaction rate. So you think of this as growth rate of cells. Reaction rate. And then uh, down here we have substrate. Substrate concentration. What's typically seen in an enzymatic reaction is that um, as you add substrate to the reaction mixture, the rate of the reaction can increase. But eventually, as you keep adding more and more substrate to the reaction mixture, what happens is that the uh, enzymes become saturated. They've got all they can handle, uh, and the reaction rate approaches some maximum value. Okay. Eventually, it doesn't help to keep adding substrate because the enzymes have all they can handle. And so this maximum rate that can occur, that is Vmax. Now, if you just take that maximum rate and divide it in half, okay, and then see what substrate concentration uh, corresponds to that level, to that rate of reaction, that is the half saturation constant. Okay. So I hope this uh, simple graph illustrates that relationship for you. It's not that complicated but it helps to see it visually. All right, let's go back to the slides. 
and talk a little bit more about this maximum rate term. Okay, Vmax. It's been shown that Vmax uh, can basically be, be expressed as the product of a rate constant and biomass concentration. So you can think of that rate constant as just a uh, kinetic rate constant. You've been exposed to those things before. Um, and uh, if you've had an undergraduate chemistry class, we use rate constants to help us quantitatively express the rate of reactions. And then biomass concentration, a number of cells that are present. You can think of it that way. Okay, so that's another way to do that. And if we if we plug uh, that expanded form of Vmax into our equation, we get this. Okay, which is um, a form of the dual of the Monod equation, which relates growth rate to the abundance of a single limiting nutrient. Okay, this is our single limiting nutrient, this substrate. All right. Now we can also account for more than one limiting nutrient um, and when we account for two limiting nutrients we refer to that as the dual Monod equation. So this is what I showed you on the previous slide. If we account for two limiting nutrients, here's the dual Monod equation. In this case the limiting nutrients correspond to electron donation and electron acceptance. So uh, the electron donor would be the substrate here and the electron acceptor would be the substrate there. Okay, we can simplify this by expressing this as the factor related to electron donation and this as the factor related to electron acceptance and that is the form of, uh, of, of this uh, Monod equation that I showed you on the second slide of this lecture. Okay, so that's the form of the equation that I keep putting up on uh, in lecture. All right, let's look at a couple of examples of this. Uh, let's apply this to a couple of examples to help illustrate some of these relationships. Uh, and the first one we're going to look at is an example uh, of sulfate reduction coupled to acetate oxidation. So in this case, acetate is the electron donor, and sulfate is the electron acceptor. If we were to define a kinetic factor associated with electron donation, to this, this is what it would look like. M refers to the molality and subscript AC refers to acetate. So that's uh, this is our substrate acetate and that's molality of acetate and then molality of acetate down here in the denominator along with this half saturation constant. Similarly here's the kinetic factor related to electron acceptance in this case, the electron acceptor is sulfate. So we have molality of sulfate down here, molality of sulfate plus the half saturation constant uh, associated with electron acceptance. Now let's go back to the writing pad to illustrate uh, some of uh, the relationships here. Oops, there we go. I'm gonna clear this off. All right. So here's my uh, kinetic factor related to electron donation. Uh, remember the electron donor is acetate, so molality of acetate plus half saturation constant. Okay, acetate. All right, so imagine uh, we have one molal acetate, and our kinetic, I'm sorry, our half saturation constant is also one. In this case, our kinetic factor associated with electron donation would equal one half. What would happen if we added acetate to the system? How would that affect this term? Well, if we do that, let's say that uh, acetate concentration doubles. When we do that, our um, kinetic factor associated with electron donation becomes two thirds. Let's keep going. Let's increase it all the way up to 10 molal. Oops, that's not what I wanted. There we go. If you do that, 10 divided by 11. So what you should see here is that as we increase, as the substrate concentration increases, right, the, uh, the kinetic factor uh, associated with electron donation approaches a value of 1, right? 
So now let's let's uh, look at this within the context of our rate equation. So here we go. Rate equals uh, rate constant times biomass concentration, kinetic factor related to electron donation, uh, electron acceptance, and then our thermodynamic potential factor. Okay. Well, the relationships that I've just described here, same thing. Uh, applies to the kinetic factor related to electron acceptance. Okay, so in terms of a uh, sulfate reduction reaction, if you increase acetate concentration, this term approaches one. If you increase sulfate concentration, this term approaches one. Okay, so what um, so what these two terms allow us to account for is the fact that as we increase sulfate concentration. Uh, they um, it, it favors a more rapid uh, re reaction kinetics. The enzyme the enzymatic reaction can occur more rapidly because you've increased substrate availability. Uh, eventually, it reaches a maximum concentration or a maximum uh, level or amount of one. Right now, on the other hand, when we increase acetate concentration. And when we increase sulfate concentration, that's also good for thermodynamics because it makes that reaction more energetically favorable, more energetically favorable. Okay, and so um, what we saw in the previous lecture is that as a reaction becomes more energetically favorable, eventually this term also starts to approach a value of one. Okay, so those increases in acetate and sulfate for the sulfate reducers eventually force this up to a value of one. If um, under ideal conditions all of these things all are very close to one, what you're left with is a reaction rate defined by these two terms, and that is Vmax. Okay. Okay, so to put this all together, what this is, what I'm trying to say is that as you add acetate and sulfate, to um, a reaction mi mixture, it's more favorable for sulfate reduction to occur more rapidly. These two terms account for the kinetic aspects of that, okay? And this accounts for the thermodynamic aspects of it, okay? Either way, you know, uh, adding acetate and adding sulfate is good for sulfate reducers. And so it all comes together here, and it's linked together. All right. go back to the slides and look at another example. Now, uh, in this case, we're talking about iron reducers. And uh, the example reaction that I've put up here, the, the iron reducers are, again, eating acetate. This time they're using the ferric iron and the mineral gertite as their electron acceptor. If we were to define a kinetic factor associated with electron donation and electron acceptance. This is what we get. The, acid, the electron donation factor is identical to the one that I just showed you, uh, but the kinetic factor associated with electron acceptance, as you can see, is a little bit different. The reason for that is because iron reduction, uh, iron reducers, they're using as their electron acceptor a mineral. Okay, so they're not they're not breathing, they're not using uh, a terminal electron acceptor that they can bring into their cytoplasm necessarily. They're using a solid mineral. And so one of the things that affects the rate at which they can transfer electrons to that solid mineral is the uh, extent to which reactive surface sites are available on that oxide or oxyhydroxide mineral. And so that's what um, these terms are attempting to account for, and that's uh, defined in some previous research. Okay, so it, it attempts to take into account the fact that iron reducers need access to that surface, and that, that, that reactive surface area is an important control on the kinetics of electron acceptance. Okay, because iron reducers, uh, they are uh, forced to rely on extracellular respiration. Um, if they're using a solid iron oxide or oxyhydroxide, okay? So this is some of the uh, strategies that microbes use to, to um, 
uh, transfer electrons extracellularly. I'm not going to go into it here because we've talked about it in a previous uh, lecture, but uh, the thing is, you know, the extent to which they can access this surface depends on that reactive surface area. So we need to take that into account when, we, uh, when we're talking about the kinetics of electron acceptance when, when it comes to iron reducers. So what are some of the things that influence reactive surface area of iron oxides and oxyhydroxides? Well, grain size and morphology, uh, crystal morphology, are important. Smaller grains have larger surface areas per, uh, per mole of mineral. Uh, and more complicated morphologies also have larger surface areas per mole of mineral, so that would uh, uh, help a microbe transfer electrons to it if the surface area were larger as a result of smaller grain size or more complicated morphology. Sorption of ferrous iron also uh, affects the extent to which reactive surface sites are available on iron oxides and oxyhydroxides, or at least the extent to which those sites are favorable to use as electron acceptors. And it seems that uh, formation of surface precipitates can, can also uh, slow down the rate at which iron oxides and oxyhydroxides can be used as electron acceptors by uh, limiting access to the ferric iron in the mineral. Okay, let's just uh, wrap this up by discussing a couple of ways that kinetics uh, these kinetic factors are related, uh, some of the terms from these kinetic factors are related to thermodynamics. Okay, let's start with uh, the half saturation constant. So here's the half saturation constant associated with electron donation uh, with, uh, I've left acetate in here as the substrate. If you decrease Kd, the half saturation constant, it favors an increase in the kinetic factor associated with electron donation. What this uh, conceptually, you can, you can relate this to uh, the affinity of the enzyme that's catalyzing the reaction for this substrate. So what it, what it implies is that uh, uh, an enzyme that has a higher affinity for the substrate would have a, a, a smaller KD value and as such, it would, the reaction would be able to occur more rapidly at smaller uh, uh, substrate concentrations. Okay, so that's good for this kinetic factor related to electron donation. It means that that reaction can occur more rapidly at low substrate concentrations. As uh, anything that favors a higher FD value uh, also favors a more rapid reaction rate. As it turns out, KD values tend to be smaller for groups that we think of as more energetically favorable. Um, this list is, uh, shows um, KD values for iron reducers, sulfate reducers, and methanogens. <clears throat> it's been shown that iron reducers tend to have KD values in the ballpark of 0.001 millimolal. Okay? Sulfate reducers substantially larger than that and then methanogens even larger yet and so these values fall out in the same order that those standard state free energy values also fall out right and so and this may be one of the ways uh, a kinetic uh, a kinetic um, explanation for that pattern and uh, the um, microbial activity that we see in many different environments where iron reducers uh, appear to occur uh, to have some advantage over sulfate reducers which have some advantage over methanogens. Okay, so this is uh, a kinetic um, uh, explanation or a kinetic uh, factor that can contribute to that pattern. Okay, um, cell abundance also is related to thermodynamics. Uh, this equation is one of the ways that we can describe uh, or model cell growth. The uh, basically uh, the change in the abundance of cells over time uh, varies as a function of the rate at which cells are created and the rate at which they die. So cell growth minus cell death. 
This Y term is referred to as the growth yield. It's the amount of biomass synthesized per electron donor consumed. So if you multiply that by the rate of the reaction, you get uh, cell growth. D is the biomass decay constant, uh, which describes the, chain, the decrease in the number of cells uh, over time when you multiply it by the number of cells that are present. Okay, bigger Y values favor more rapid cell growth. Okay, so a population can grow more rapidly if its um, specific growth yield is larger. And it's been shown that um, organism catalyzing more energetically favorable reactions also have larger growth yields. Okay, so um, this is a, a literature review that uh, took into account quite a lot of data, and you can see that there's a positive, strong correlation between growth yield and reaction-free energy. Uh, basically, what this implies is that, basic, is, is that organisms catalyzing reactions that are more energetically favorable seem to be able to grow more cells. Right? This uh, could also contribute to the fact that we see this repetition right, in this pattern in different environments. Uh, where more energetically favorable reactions are tend to occur first and so forth. Um, because more cells, uh, the, the more cells you have, the faster you can run your reaction. This isn't really hard to, um, this isn't hard to imagine. Uh, for example, if you were trapped in a cave, that uh, the, the entrance to which had, had been sealed off, and no more oxygen could get in, would you rather be in there with 10 people or a hundred people. You know, the oxygen would last longer, it wouldn't be depleted as rapidly if there were 10 versus if there were a hundred. So uh, populations that can uh, grow cells more rapidly uh, have an advantage over those that can't grow cells very rapidly because they can achieve greater populations. Population size is a direct uh, control on the rate of the reaction. Okay, as population size increases, so does the rate. Okay, I hope that this um, this lecture has uh, um, illustrated some of the ways that um, kinetic controls can affect microbial reaction rates in environments, um, and then also how these things are linked to thermodynamics and all come together in this rate law. We're gonna. Um, uh, pull some more of this together and, and reinforce some of these concepts in, in uh, the next couple of lectures. Um, I hope uh, that um, if you have any questions, you come let me know. In any case, uh, thanks for your attention.